Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. It's great to be together. Wonderful to open up God's Word for another day and another week as we continue our way into the first letter to the Corinthians. We're going to be turning through to 1 Corinthians 1. And before we read our text, as always, let's pray. Father in heaven, it is good indeed to open up your word and read it. And we just pray that you would help us by your Holy Spirit to understand it and to benefit from it, that you might use it to nourish us and feed us and grow us in grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting at verse 4. I give thanks to my God always for you, because of the grace of God that was given to you in Christ Jesus that in every way you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you were not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called, into the fellowship of his Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Paul has many reasons to give thanks for himself and all that he's experienced, but he loves to give thanks for what God is doing among God's people. And here, as Paul writes to the Corinthians, as he often does in almost all the letters, he begins, after saying his greetings, by giving thanks to God for what God has done among them. And just before we start to consider that, I think it's a wonderful reminder for us, isn't it? We have much to give thanks for. We have many different things. As we look around our churches, as we consider what God is doing, whether it's in our own church, or a church down the road, or in the wider church around the world, God has given us many different reasons to be able to rejoice and give thanks for what he is doing in the world. You know, it's really easy for us, isn't it? To focus upon the negatives, to focus upon the challenges and the difficulties surrounding us. I'm sure all of us can look at our church and see many different troubles, maybe problems, maybe difficulties, pains, disagreements, all sorts of different things. However, when we actually stop and look around us and think about what God is doing, we can actually find a lot of reasons of why we should be giving thanks. But what does Paul expressly give thanks for? Well, he gives thanks to God for a number of different reasons. Firstly, he thanks God for the grace that has been given to the Corinthians. And so in verse 4, he says, I thank God always for you because of the grace of God that was given to you in Christ Jesus. Now, there's a very important note there. And firstly, it's not that God has just given them a substance called grace as if he had dropped off a 20 liter bucket of grace to them, but rather he has given grace in Jesus Christ. You see, grace comes to us in a person. And so Paul says, grace came to you in the person of Jesus Christ, in him in whom all the fullness of God dwells, we find the grace of God. We find God's favor towards us in Jesus. In that revealing of Jesus Christ as the savior of God given to the world. But what is it that this grace has brought about? Paul says in verse 5, In every way you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge, this grace that has been revealed in Christ brings about an enrichment, a change. It didn't leave the Corinthians the same, but rather it worked in them, or rather Christ worked in them to bring about an enrichment, an increase in knowledge, speech, understanding, joy, and all of the fruit of the Spirit as God's grace worked out in their life. And what did this working out of the grace in the Lord Jesus Christ bring? Well, if you have a look at verse 7, it says, So you are not lacking any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, there's a period of waiting, isn't there? That was true for the Corinthians, and it's true for us today. We continue to wait 
for Christ's return, his second revealing. And as we do so, we need to wait, and there are things we need to do while we wait. And Paul says, you've been given everything you need, every gift that is necessary for you to wait. Now that word gift is very important, because Paul is going to address some abuses of the gifts later on in the book. And so right out of the gate here, he stresses that they don't need anything else. In fact, they have everything they need as they wait for Christ to come back. And that's a wonderful reminder for us, isn't it? We aren't lacking anything in our churches and in our personal lives as we wait for Jesus. He's given us everything necessary as a family, as a people of God. And that also means that you've got an important part to play in your church as you wait with the other brothers and sisters for Jesus to come back. God has given you gifts through his grace to use to benefit the family as you wait for Christ's return. We're reminded of the words in Ephesians 4, where it says that Christ gave apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors and evangelists, and he gave those things as gifts to build up the church so that the church would be mature and able to stand till the end. And so how do these gifts play out? What do they bring about in the body of Christ? Well, Paul alludes to it here, doesn't he? He says, As you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as these gifts are express, expressed and used as we wait for Christ's return, Jesus Christ, by his grace, is working in our community to present us guiltless and to sustain us to the end. You see, it's not so much that you and I hold on really well, and we endure really well, and we persevere really well, but rather that Jesus Christ himself comes to us by his grace, by the grace of God, and he sustains us to the very end. Now, that's both an encouragement for us to keep on keeping on and keep on using our gifts, but it's doubly a great assurance for us that our sustaining doesn't rely upon our effort, but it relies upon God's grace. And that's not something that comes from us. So our assurance and sustenance to the very end isn't about me and what I bring to the table, but it's about God and his wonderful grace that is extended to all of us. But then lastly, notice what Paul goes on to say in verse 9. This God, this God who has given us grace in Christ and who has enriched us and has gifted us and has given us everything necessary to pre present us guiltless towards the end and sustaining us in Christ Jesus. This God, Paul says in verse 9, is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son. Jesus Christ our Lord. If you needed any other assurance, if those things weren't enough, look to God and consider who God is. Are you wavering in your faith? God is faithful. Are you worried about the end? God is faithful. Are you doubting whether you're a Christian? God is faithful. Are you feeling alone? You have received fellowship in Christ Jesus. Are you feeling tired? and worn out. Look to Jesus, who is the great comforter and fellowship for your soul. You see, we're not alone in this battle, not in the church, but especially not in our relationship with God. We have entered into fellowship, rich relationship, a mutual, reciprocal, back and forth relationship with Jesus Christ. And so upwards we look and we see Christ in the heavenly places, and we recognize that we don't stand aloof and look at him at a distance as though we're a peasant, far away from the king, but rather we draw near and enter into sweet fellowship with Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Son of God. You see, the grace of God brings immense benefits to us, and it's something that we can ponder upon and chew on 24-7, and it's something we should chew upon 24-7. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness to us, and we do pray that you would help us to love you, 
help us to enter into this fellowship and richness and enrichment and everything else. And we pray that you would sustain us. We pray that you would hold on to us and that by your grace, we would keep on keeping on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks so much for another day. I'll see you back here tomorrow afternoon. Thank mm-hmm. you.